<laughs> Hi guys, this is Artful Kisses, and I am drawing a raccoon eating a grilled cheese sandwich. The idea just randomly popped into my head and I decided to go with it. So I would like to talk about using references and what I do, um, or what I have found works best for me in using references. And I found that um, when I was younger and started drawing, I didn't use references at all. I drew everything off the top of my head, and a lot of the things I drew looked really wonky. And some of those things still kind of do. <laughs> um, and later on, I started drawing using references, and I realized that I couldn't draw things without a reference. So I would draw something, and it would look you know, exactly like my reference. It wasn't so much of mine. If I tried to do my style while using a photo reference, it ended up looking really weird because it was semi-realistic or the uh, proportions were wrong because my style calls for bigger eyes usually and because um, I'm, I'm a cartoonist so it doesn't match up with photo references. And I found that if I was trying to draw off of like fan art and I was using a reference that someone else drew, I would end up copying their style without really thinking about it. I'd be meshing my style and theirs, and it would look terrible because it wouldn't be the parts that go together. It would just be contradictory. And so what I decided I needed to do was, or at least what I tried to do, was instead of having my reference where I can see it and my drawing at the same time, I decided to have it off to the side where I actually have to physically turn my head in order to look at my reference. And that worked out really well. That's what I did for this picture with the raccoon and the grilled cheese sandwich. I had my computer off to the side. Um, and because of my setup, which is really pitiful, by the way, at this point, um, I had to turn my entire body to see my computer, which I had um, two different browsers up. Well, same browser. I had two different internet tabs open. Um one with a bunch of photos of raccoons. I just Google imaged it. Raccoons. And another tab was grilled cheese sandwiches. Because <laughs> I like never draw food. So I don't know how to draw food. And I'm allergic to grilled cheese sandwiches. So I don't eat them or look at them very often. Um, <laughs> and so what I found works best for me with my reference is if I can't actually see it and the drawing that I'm doing at the same time. Um, and that moment where I'm moving to look in between them and it's not quite in my head. I don't really retain pictures in my head very well, but I can get a feel of exactly what it is. And it's quick enough that I remember kind of what it looks like, but I have time to translate it into my style. It's not going to look exactly like the one in the photo. Um, and that's great because that's not what I'm going for. I don't want it to look like the one in the photo. I want it to look like my own thing. And so I found that my style meshes better with other styles if if I do that, if I have some time in between looking at my reference and looking at my picture, if I can see them both at the same time, it always looks wrong every single time. Even if I'm doing a commission and I'm trying to draw a person to look like that person, I still have my photo off to the side, my photo reference off to the side. So I can't see it at the same time. Otherwise I will end up drawing a realistic picture instead of a cartoon one, which is what they paid me for. And then I'll have to start over. So it's really, I think it's really important to find where your, um, your, <laughs> I'm blanking on the word, but like where your perfect area is for, uh, for where you need your reference to be and for what works for you. And for me, it's having enough to the side, but for you, it could be something entirely different. I know of people who have to have their reference right in front of them. And that's what I originally did. Is what I thought I needed, but it did not help. And having it where I can't look directly at it, it has also helped me retain images in my head better. I can better um, remember what things exactly what things look like. And it's good practice, I think, to look at a picture. How I ended up coming to this is it was kind of a, a series of going through different ideas. Um, but one of them was, or the first thing, was I would have an image... And I would look at it for a little bit, and then I would try to draw the picture without looking at it. And then at the very end, 
I would at least do my sketch and everything. At the very end, I would look at the image before I did the line art to make sure that I didn't have any major details messed up. Look at the line art and, or look at the image, my reference, and then do the line art, maybe looking at the reference. And sometimes that worked for me. Um, usually it still kind of made it a little wonky, but it was a place to start. And um, after doing that enough times, I started doing it to where I would look at the reference and then do the line art without really looking at it. And it was good practice for me. It helped me retain better. It was like a memory exercise. And I feel like artists should do memory exercises because if you're not drawing from life, I mean, a lot of artists only draw from life and you you don't want to only draw with references. You need to You need to be able to draw other ways too. And so that was something I had to learn was how to kind of get in between, draw, uh, draw from memory and draw from references. And the more often you draw from references without looking directly at the reference, um, the more things that you're putting into your brain that you can use later. It's like having a, an image database in your brain that your imagination can use in order to come up with your own ideas. And so it's good to practice things that you don't normally draw, and it's good to use references for them so you don't learn to draw them wrong, and um, stuff like that. So my raccoon here is a mix between... Whoa, <laughs> that was the part where I dropped my camera. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> and I don't really know how to edit that out. Um, but... Um, where was I going? Oh yeah, the raccoon I was drawing ended up being kind of a mix between um, photo the photo references I was looking at, and then the one from Pocahontas, Miko. That was my favorite movie when I was a little kid, and I watched it like four times a day <laughs> between um, the year it came out until I was like, well, when I was like two, and then until probably the end of the 90s. <laughs> um, it's still one of my favorites. But anyway, um, uh, well, lost my train of thought. I ramble a lot here. Um, oh yeah, my, and yeah, my raccoon ended up being a mix between, um, Miko, what Miko looked like off from memory, and then, um, my photo references, which were a bit different, and I did notice that there were different types of raccoon markings, like, not all of them had the same exact way that they're, that they had the mask on their face, some of them, it covered their nose too, like, it went straight across their nose, like, you know, what we usually think of with the raccoon. Um, and then some of them, it didn't. They actually had like a white stripe up in the middle of their face. And that's what I ended up going with here. And um, I think it's pretty soon in the video where my my camera quit recording because it ran out of room on my phone. And I really wish that my phone would alert me when it does that, but it doesn't. And so for the second, um, the second take of this video, the second half of it was, there was a lot of times where I just paused and looked to make sure that my camera was still recording and it actually still cuts off at the very end when I'm finishing up coloring his eyes, <laughs> but I got most of it on there. So when my video does skip ahead, you miss the entire grilled cheese sandwich, which I'm kind of sad about because I had to work really hard on that thing because I've never drawn one before and it was really hard to try and get it to look like a grilled cheese sandwich and I'm not sure if it did um can well, let me know what you think on that <laughs> if it ended up looking like a sandwich or not um my mom said it looked like a peanut butter sandwich it's like oh okay uh, kind of disappointing but whatever <laughs> um yeah so I ended up doing the lines on there with a blue pencil I started out with a light gray and I went through and, oh, I guess it was a dark gray, I just did it regularly. Really These are Prismacolor pencils, so you can draw really light or really dark. It's all up to you on there. But I ended up um, using a blue for most of it, for all the gray parts of the, of the raccoon ended up being blue, kind of. And the black parts, I ended up using a dark green, <laughs> just for the darkest parts of them, because... Um, Prismacolors are really super expensive. I didn't buy these. I was lucky enough that someone gave them to me because I didn't use them anymore. And 
that's like two hundred dollars worth of pencils right there. <laughs> and oh, there's where it's kept at. And um, I think my computer just died. Shoot! Oh no, there it is. <laughs> um, uh, I'm recording the audio on my phone while I have the um, the raccoon video playing without audio just to make sure I get my timing right and hopefully that works <laughs> but um like I was saying here's a Hmong while I didn't do anything because I was um explaining that it skipped ahead and I missed the whole grilled cheese sandwich and all that stuff I was so disappointed about that so back to references um I also want to mention or like what types of things to use as references and again this is um, more based on what I do and how I do it and every artist finds their own hot spot when it comes to um, you know what works for them but what I do is a lot of times especially if I'm doing fan art the things I will use for references I might have pull up one picture of what the character actually looks like in the canon original thing that it's from. But I also like to use fan art as a reference as references to make fan art. And this is just an example because I really don't do that much fan art. But um, I like to do that because then I can see uh, how other people interpret that character. In, as opposed to just figuring out how I interpret it. That way it's a mix between what it originally is, my interpretation of it, and other people's interpretation of it. I get ideas from what other people do. And I don't, and I'm not saying I copy them because I do not. I strongly, um, I, I'm very strongly against the whole copying concept. Um, I think there is a time and place for tracing when it is only to, to learn to get, gain muscle memory but you cannot sign it and you cannot say it's yours if you traced it because it's not. It's someone else's and you just traced it. So I think there's a time and place uh, building muscle memory. I did it to build muscle memory, but I did not claim that stuff as my own and I still do not. I didn't post, I don't post it online or anything and uh, I don't do that anymore because I've accomplished what I was trying to accomplish with that. But um, so I'm not talking about copying. I'm very opposed to copying. But, um, but I like to see other people's interpretations of things because maybe that might change how I think about it a little bit or give me a new idea or something. And so I love to look at other people's art to get ideas for poses and, uh, maybe even stories. But again, it's not copying. It's totally different. Um, it just might make me think of something else and I make sure that it's not the same thing because I do not want to copy them or anything. Um, cause then it's not original, which is part of the reason I don't do a lot of fan art is because I figure if I'm going to make something really good, I might as well make it something that is entirely mine and get, you know, the credit for it. Um, might seem a little selfish, but hey, I need to get paid for my art at some point, don't I? Um, but I think it's good to look at other things that other people made and use those for ideas. And so a lot of times when I do fan art, the images I pull up of characters are ones that other people have done. So I can get ideas on what they look like in different styles. Because a lot of the things I do fan art of are, um, well, it's mostly Yu-Gi-Oh. I mostly do Yu-Gi-Oh fan art if I'm doing fan art. Um, and Yu-Gi-Oh is, is a manga. And so the, the style is very simplistic and very pointy. And it looks totally different than my own style, which is very round and is still kind of simplistic but has a lot more detail than the anime does and um and so translating it into my style can be kind of hard so i like looking i love looking at fan art of animes that aren't in anime in the anime style because i feel like the anime style is pretty simplistic and it's a good starting place that's kind of where i started out when i started drawing seriously and um, I don't want to go back. Nothing against the anime or manga style in itself. Just, it's not what I want to do anymore. I'm, I have found, uh, I have found where I think where my style is supposed to be, and I like it much better. Um, 
so nothing against people who do anime, but I feel like you need to practice other things too in order to get, like, if you practice drawing realistically or drawing another style, your anime style will get better because you'll learn. Um, and that's an entirely different <laughs> lesson. <laughs> but um, I love looking at art that is um, starts out one way totally simplistic, like fan art of something that's totally simplistic normally. And even other cartoons, like um, Phineas and Ferb is like the biggest challenge to try and take a character from that and translate it into a more detailed style because Phineas's head is a triangle. And it's really hard. It's not even the kind of triangle that it's like, oh, he just has a pointy face. It's, no, his head is literally a triangle. It's like sideways. And I have tried and tried and tried and I think I kind of figured out how to make that actually look like a human head. But <laughs> this is a really big challenge. So if you ever want a really good art challenge, go and find a, a cartoon style that is totally different than your own and really, really weird and try to draw characters from that in your own style. And um, try to make it look like them. Take aspects from it. Like when I when I draw fan art for Phineas and Ferb, I try really hard to make it look like Phineas's head could be translated into a triangle if it went the other way around. So it's it's a good challenge. But um, that being said, that's that's kind of why I like looking at fan art for references is because then I have a whole bunch of ideas of like what they would look like in different styles as opposed to just the style they were originally in. Um, and I should do fan art more just for practice. It is great practice. I don't want to sell it, but um, I don't want to get in trouble or anything. But it is such great practice. And the raccoon there, I'm adding the blue in the darker part of the parts of the shadows to give it more depth. Although being a you know really simplistic pencil drawing on just in a sketchbook, I didn't work too hard on it. Like I said before, this is not one of my masterpiece pictures or drawings. It's just a... It's kind of... It's more than a doodle, I would say, but it's not huge. I, just random idea popped into my head, and I thought, that could be really cute. And I was like, you know what? I might as well just record it. I'm going to draw... I draw in my sketchbook all the time anyway. Um, if I, I want, want to be making videos, so I thought... Let's just record something I would draw anyway, which was my same thought when it came to the um, my New Year's picture, the self-portrait I did. It was just, I'm going to draw this anyway. I might as well try and record it since I'm planning to start and finish a picture all at once, which does not always happen for me. Um, I have the typical artist kind of uh, ADD type of personality there. Not to say I have ADD, but I just act like it. Uh, um, uh, another tip I want to give, if you're going to make videos, if you're going to just draw art for something, if you're going to do really anything, um, it's good to, if you are really gung-ho at first, go ahead and do a lot of it, because at some point you're going to feel kind of bogged down and not super gung-ho, and you're going to be tired of whatever you're doing, and if you've worked ahead, you can afford to take a little break from it and do something else. And something I have noticed is that if I have been drawing art for other people a lot, doing commissions, or if I have been working on illustrations or whatever, any big project, ah, I got the hiccups. Um, I have found that it does me a whole lot of good if I just take a break and just take a day. For me, it's always Sundays, day of rest. I, um, for me, art can be very restful, very soothing, very relaxing. But it can also be super, super stressful because it's work. That's what I do for a living. I make art. And so something I have noticed is that um, if I'm doing all this art for work, if I'm working, I get tired and I get exhausted. And then after a while, I don't feel like drawing anymore. And I don't want that to ever be a permanent feeling because this is what I love to do. But what I've noticed is that if I can take a day, I said, you know, Sunday is the day of rest. I am not going to do any work on Sunday. I am strongly opposed to that. And if, um, I mean, if I, if I have to go in for work or something, I'll just pick a different day to be my day of rest that week. But I need, I need a resting day. And I think that beyond just in the Bible, it says to do that. Um, there is, 
there's a whole psychological thing about it. Like a lot of the, the rules in the Bible are actually, um, they're, they're to help you. And so, especially like perfect example is the day of rest because, um, you need a break. You work a whole lot better if you take breaks. And so I try to take plenty of, of breaks, not too many. I probably take more than I should, but, um, on Sundays, I draw a lot on Sundays, and I love it. I draw during church, helps me pay, t- pay attention, and I draw when I get home. Sometimes I even draw in the car on the way back and forth. And um, But I only draw stuff I want to draw. I draw the things that are just on my mind, on my heart, things that I want to draw. It's, you know, it's, it's playing. It's playing for me. And then when Monday comes, I'm ready to work again. I'm ready to draw what I need to draw because I took that time to rest and draw what is restful for me. So I want to suggest taking breaks from whatever you're doing. Um, when you're on fire, which happens sometimes, there have been times where, like I normally go to bed by 10, but um, I have to get up early, but I have accidentally stayed up until 4 a.m. before working on art. And just because every once in a while you like catch fire and you are ready to go and make all this amazing stuff. And when you feel that, do it. Take advantage of that and get the things done. But when, um, and that way you work ahead so that when you need a break, you can take one. So I went ahead and made like three of these videos back to back. I just spent a couple days making videos And I'm not going to post them all right away. I am going to spread them out a little bit. I'll post them like a few days apart, each of them, so that, you know, I can take a break later on when I'm not all gung-ho for making videos. I can take a break. And I feel like that's that's, that's a good plan because I think I fit kind of the stereotypical artist personality sometimes where... um, I am kind of like, well, if I feel like doing it, I'll do a good job. If I don't feel like doing it, it's going to be a pain and it's not necessarily going to happen. And if it does, it won't necessarily be done well. But, um, if, uh, when it gets down to it, I do not work well under pressure. I entirely shut down under pressure and it's just terrible. (laughs) But. That's all the more reason to do a good job when I'm, and and do a lot when I am all gung-ho for it. So I had a little bit of time left on this uh, video that still needed sound for. So um, I just want to say that um, for my channel, I'm hoping to actually teach some art things, not only show uh, drawing videos because I, I really love the way those look and that's something I'm passionate about but I, I also want to um, give tips on drawing or just art in general and being creative and staying inspired and things like that and um, like feel free to, to uh, comment with uh, questions or ideas of the types of things that you want to hear about and I will see what I can do I'll just ramble on another topic, I guess, but let me know if there's a specific subject you want me to ramble about, or um, that you wouldn't mind me rambling about as much as another one, maybe. Um, Whatever's tolerable. But uh, if that, um, if that's something, if there's something you want to hear about, um, I have been drawing for 20 years, and I'm actually a legitimate art teacher, so um, let me know. And there's the finished drawing there, my hungry little raccoon, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.